Hello again guys, Aaron here from ASM Computing. Welcome back to, to our final and last part of the jQuery banner, part 3. Um, I'm, hopefully this is going to be our, our last um, our last video. So I'm not going to talk and tell you exactly too much on what we're going to be doing. I'm just literally going to get straight into this. As, this. as I said, it's the final part. And if you'd watched video 2 or part 2, you would have heard me say that this is going to be the last video and I was going to explain all the jQuery code. So let's uh, get straight on with this. As you can see I've already got my code in there but just for this tutorial as I said I'm going to delete all that out so we have nothing in there and I'm going to start again with you for you guys just so you can see everything. So I'm going to come in here and open up our code. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to signify to the, uh, the bra uh, not the browser, sorry, the, the actual document. We only want this to work or load once this is ready. So document, so we do a dollar sign, open bracket or open parenthesis, type in document and then close parenthesis and dot ready and then we want to function to fire off once this is ready so uh, just follow along guys and you'll see exactly how to do this so as I said dollar sign on open parenthesis document close parenthesis period full stop or dot whatever you like to call them and then we're saying once this is ready we want to fire off this function so we put an open for, sorry an open parenthesis then we write function, open and close parenthesis, and then we open a curly brace, come down a couple of lines, close the curly brace, close the parenthesis, and a semicolon. Now we only need to put a, a uh, closing curly brace, a sem uh, sorry, a parenthesis, and a semicolon after um, if we have, say, like we have here, we're telling it to do something before the function. If we just had function, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, and then a curly brace, we wouldn't have to put this. Here, I'll just show you. If I just take this out, and see so now we're coming up with an error. So if I was to take these out as well, that error should go away because now we're not actually using anything before that function. So just bear that in mind. I'll just put this back. So, um, as well, if you want to name a function, that's what you put inside of here. So, we put the, uh, the function name right where I've put name. But as we're not actually using a name or anything specific, I'm leaving that as that is. So, inside of here, I'm going to set uh, two variables. The first one I'm going to be setting is timer. Now we don't actually need to write anything else. We're just setting a, a variable. So it's like PHP where you actually set a variable. Uh, we're just setting that there. And the second one we're going to actually give that speed as the name. But this time we're going to equal that to whatever we set. So I'm going to set mine to 5,000. Now, 5,000 is milliseconds. This is going to be our timer. Or, sorry, this is going to be how long it takes to flick through each picture. So this is going to be the speed that it takes. So, 5,000 milliseconds is 5 seconds. So just bear that in mind. So if you had 10,000 milliseconds, that would be 10 seconds. If you had 1,000 milliseconds, that would be one second. So uh, put that to exactly what you want. As I said, you can always just keep following this tutorial and uh, put exactly what I've put and you should have no problems. So the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to initiate the slide to start. So I'm just going to write INIT underscore slide and I'm going to put an open parenthesis, closing parenthesis, semicolon. So basically we're just 
initiating the slide to start. So that's why we've done that there. So now I'm going to make the function for that initiate slide. So function. And then we need to give it the name we called it. So in, oh, spell that wrong, init underscore slide. And we want to open and close our parenthesis space. Or you don't have to put spaces once you put your open and curly, uh, sorry, your opening curly brace, but I just like to so it spaces it apart so I know exactly where it starts and ends. And we're going to come down, and as I said before, because we're already using a function, we're not doing nothing before the function, you can just close it off with a closing curly brace, and you'll see that we have no syntax errors. And I'm going to Inside of here, I'm going to say active. So this is going to be basically our first image that's going to be active once we uh, load up this page and the DOM's ready and it starts to trigger off this uh, event. So we're going to say active colon and we're going to, oh no, sorry, I'm miles away, active equals and now we're going to say dollar sign open parenthesis and we're going to say uh, hash for id this is how you again uh, point to a specific div within jquery or find a specific div using jquery is the hash symbol for id and we need to find the header holder and we're going to say um, space dot banner. So basically we're saying ID of header holder and dot banner. So obviously the class of banner. And we want the first image from that class. So this is going to be basically image one. And we're going to close that off. And semicolon. So basically here we're just saying active. So we're telling it that that image one is going to be the first image to be put into that holder. So that line there is just basically saying that's our first image, or that's the image we want to load first, basically. So we're going to come down the line, and now we're going to tell our timer that we want to set a timeout. So how long it's going to be before we get to our next picture. So set and make sure you put a capital T for timeout. And if you do, if you're using um, Dreamweaver, you should see it will light up a light blue, just like that. So that it is one reason I do like using Dreamweaver. It gives you the code help. It's not that I need the code help. I just find it easier so I can quickly scroll through, just push enter in it. That way I know it's spelled correctly. Um, I don't know whether you've done a lot of scripts where it may have um, sp uh, been spelled wrong. You've put it up live and it doesn't work and then you realise you've made a spelling error. So I just prefer that just for them, that simplicity. So after that we're going to open a parenthesis and we're going to say next slide. Now this is going to be a, um, a new... Uh, function name that I'm going to be using but I'm just putting it in now so I can tell exactly what I want to do and I'm going to put a comma and space and then I'm going to type speed so basically we're saying oh, on that timer event we want to set a timeout for the next picture to be loaded in within the speed variable that we've set which is 5000 milliseconds so five seconds, we want the next picture to load in. So we're in that there. So that's our first one's done. So if I come back, you probably won't see much difference if I go to live view. Oh, well, it's loaded in the first image for us. <coughs> but it won't actually skip through to the next pictures because we haven't made the function to tell, uh, tell the picture to skip through our pictures. So I'm going to leave it on live view 
and I'm going to come back to Banner Changer, come back to the code. Now with this you can actually have buttons on the side of the picture and all you need to do is once you've set them with their class and give them their uh, trigger them buttons to skip backwards and forwards through the pictures. So basically what we're doing now, but we're going to be doing it automatically whereas the buttons you can still have there, still use these functions to allow the users to manually skip through the pictures to go backwards and forwards. So let's do our next function. And as again, this is going to be next slide. So this is going to be telling it exactly uh, to do on the next slide. Once we tell it, uh, sorry, once we tell jQuery to initiate the slide, and then once we tell it, we want to after five seconds bring in the next image. So let's come down a couple of lines, close that one off. And the good thing is, once I've done this function, I'm just going to literally copy it, paste it down, and change a couple of things, as they're going to both both be more or less the same. So the first thing we need to do is we need to tell jQuery we want to clear our timeout because we need to clear our timeout timer. I was just trying to think of an easier way to say it without it sounding a bit too confusing. So obviously this is what we have here. Is saying after every five seconds, then keep uh, loading in the next picture. So we need to say to it, hold on, once we've done that, we need to clear that time out because we don't want it to keep firing off. We need to keep that picture there, then wait five seconds again. Then we can initiate the slide to function again. So we're going to clear the time out and we're going to put timer inside of here. So it's just an open um, parenthesis, then timer, close parenthesis, and then semicolon. And obviously we can do that because of that's our variable name that we set at the top. So after that, we're going to come down to the next line and we're going to say next. So this is going to be the next picture that we want to come to. We're going to say open parenthesis and we're going to say active dot next. Um, if this looks a bit confusing, as I say, don't worry, literally just copy exactly what I've got written here and this will work for you. And we're going to open up another parenthesis and we're going to say class of banner and we want to say the dot length of that and we want to say if that is greater than zero. So if the next picture that's loaded in has been loaded in and it has a length which is greater than zero, then obviously we want to do something. So let's end that there. And like PHP, you can use if and else statements. And again, with PHP, you can also use the question mark to distinguish whether it's true or false. So that's what we're going to be doing here. So question mark, and I'm going to say active dot next again, open and close parenthesis and colon base. I'm going to put dollar sign. I'm just writing this out, guys. Sorry if I'm not explaining it just yet. I'm just literally uh, coding it out, and then I can sort of try and explain it. So basically, we're saying our next image to be loaded in. We're going to say active, so that's going to be this here. So the first, or well not the first, but the image that's sat there at the moment, we want to say dot next to obviously uh, tell it we want the next image to load in within that class of banner. And if it has a length greater than zero, then we want to fire this off. Else, obviously, if it's less than zero, this won't function. So that's why I've got that there. So that there is more or less the same as that there because that is our active function or what that is what is equal to active basically. So as I said just follow along and you will find it does work for you. So next we want to say active.next and 
No, sorry. I'm miles away. I'm really miles away. So active dot fade out. So this is where we want to tell it to fade out. Um, so then we can load in the next picture. And I'm just going to put that as slow. Just so you guys can obviously see it. So, and then we're going to say next dot fade in because this is the next picture that's coming into that con uh, that container or that holder for the header where the banners are going to be sitting and out of here we're just going to write slow again and double speech mark and close parenthesis and we're going to semicolon and we're going to say active and that is going to be equal to next semicolon so basically we're saying this active has that first picture in, or once it has an uh, once it has a picture in it, we want to equal that to next, so that will then bring the next one in. So basically, active dot fade out. So once that one's faded out, we want to say to jQuery that is going to equal next. So then that will fire this off to say, hold on, let's fire in. Uh, sorry, let's load up the next picture, but we're going to fade it in slow. So that's basically what that's doing there. And the last line, we want to say timer. So we're going to set our timer again. Um, and we need to do this so that we can obviously have our image come in exactly when we need it to. So next slide. And we're going to say speed again. So, as I said, I know if this looks confusing, don't worry too much. Just literally follow along with the code and you'll find that this will work. So I'll save that out. Now, that's our function completed for that one. So, what I'm going to do, and you guys do this as well if you like, is just literally copy from this last closing brace here. I'm going to copy that right up to function next slide. So, basically, I'm getting this whole function here. I'm going to control C and come back down a few lines down and I'm going to paste it in again. What we're going to do here, we're just going to literally change this to PREV. I've spelt perv, I don't know why. <laughs> My spelling today is not great, so prev. Sorry about that, guys, I wasn't being rude. Um, just a quick uh, finger on the on the uh, letters there and come out wrong. Um, basically what we're going to do is change next. So we can leave the timer. So next equals active dot. So we want to say previous because obviously we want to go back. Dot length dot zero. Active dot prev. Um, okay. Blah, 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 blah. And this one, we actually want to say last. Now, you don't have to worry about making these first and last definitions, as this is just Jay's, uh, sorry, this is just telling jQuery, once you get to the last picture in that container or in that uh, rotation, then just go back to number one, basically. But don't worry about that. jQuery will handle that for you. Um, so we can actually leave the rest and it should work as intended. So let's save that out and fingers crossed it all works well. Let's go back to our source code, go to design and I'm going to come off of here and I'm going to go back into live view and hopefully it should change for us. There we go. And now we're flicking through the banners we have there. So, banner 2, banner 3, banner 4, and the next one, banner 5. So, I hope that helps you out, guys, and uh, sorry about this video being quite long. But as I said, I wanted to try and explain and show you the, the way to script this jQuery out. So, don't worry about it going off and not coming back to banner 1. Um, it will actually work 
it's obviously I'm only using this within Dreamweaver. Um, I will just try it again, just check it. Um, and if it does go off, I will have a quick look. I'll pause the video and I'll have a look and come back and tell you. So once you get to banner 5, it should go back to banner 1. Okay, um, let's have a look. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll quickly have a look and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back guys. I found out what the problem was. Um, you was probably looking at the screen shouting at me. Um, but as I say, when you do tutorials, if you do them yourself, uh, you will find that sometimes you will make a little mistake. So I'm going to go back into my banner JS file. And as you can see where my cursor is flashing at the moment, after we told jQuery to load in the next picture or the previous picture, I haven't actually... I haven't actually put the hash or pound symbol next to header holder to distinguish exactly which div it is we want to intend to change the picture from and into. So on both of them, I'm just going to put um, the hash or the pound symbol as you know it. And I'm just going to save that. And now it should work. So let's go back to source, design. I'm going to come off of that and just reload. So, banner 1, let's just now hope that you go back to banner 1, so banner 2, banner 3, I just had a quick look, I've not actually tried it yet, I, I wanted to show you exactly uh, what happens, so banner 5, and banner 1, so that's all the error was, so I didn't want to obviously put it in, make sure it works and come back. I'd rather go through the errors with you, make sure that if it didn't work, I could have paused it again and actually uh, had a better look in it, into it, sorry. But there you go, there's a jQuery um, banner rotator for you, which you can use anywhere you like, or you can use it for your images. Um, I'll quickly show you just here, if I open this up, you can actually see that this is mine here. Um, on a site that I'm making and it's just flicking through the pictures that I've got here and I've got my two buttons so if I roll over you can actually see that if I change that I can go backwards, I can go forwards I can go right up to my last picture and back and I can just skip through the pictures and if I let go so if I go back to number four go back to number three let go it should now carry on with itself and still go to the next picture so there you go guys have fun and uh, leave some comments and show me what you uh, what you make with this see you later guys have fun